photo day. Photo day. That's it's a highlight yes. for That's us. A, that is a highlight. We'll get to that in a sec. No, not really. But first, <laughs> um, runners in scoring position. Okay. <laughs> the team, this home stand, Whoa. batting over 300 in those situations. Was there a conversation had that changed the approach in those situations, or what have you seen overall that you really have allowed for those results? Well, a couple things. I mean, we there wasn't one conversation. <laughs> There's been conversations, you know, ongoing about our offense, and you know, I'd say probably more so the last six weeks. We've talked about certain things specifically about, uh, you know, conducting at bats in certain situations, you know, situational hitting. You know, maybe guys in scoring position, certain approaches that we want to see, uh, certain approaches with two strikes. Uh, Know that we're talking about. It's been great conversation. Hitting coaches, uh, the veteran players, uh, a number of uh, older guys chiming in on on some things. So it's been great dialogue. So I think overall our team focus has picked up. And now, most recently, we're you know obviously uh, clicking on all cylinders as far as you know, scoring runs. And I think, you know, the statistics with runners in scoring position is a byproduct of some things collectively we've talked about as a group uh, that are paying off in between. In, in particular, with runners in scoring position, you guys' ability to draw walks and your willingness to draw walks. Trevor's story last night said we view it as kind of putting pressure on the pitcher and having that mindset that the pressure is on him. How important is it to have a mindset like that in this situation? Well, you know, that's you know, it's part of the thing that we've talked about and, I, and I've sort of, you know, said it from the pitching perspective. When runners are on base, when runners are in scoring position, but the pitcher's in trouble. And I've sort of let the guys know just from my experience as a pitcher that they it's I'm the one who's in trouble. You know, I'm uncomfortable. I got guys on third with less than two. You know, I got the bases loaded. Whatever the situation is with guys on base, the pitcher's in trouble. And I think that, you know, the guys that have, have sort of taken that, you know, that mindset that he's in trouble, I'm not. I'm going to wait for my pitch. He has to get me out. And, you know, I think that has shifted a little bit since the first couple weeks of the season. So our walk rate is up, like you mentioned. That's a good thing. I think our strikeout rate is coming down over the last few weeks, and we got to sustain it. But, you know, a lot of these conversations and a little bit of shift in thinking has helped our guys. Maybe when the season starts, too, they're looking to say they got to take that next step. <coughs> Lose a game or two, and the pressure is like at some point you finally take a deep breath. And say, well, I think so. I mean, at, at, it, at the moment, you don't think that because you know we came out opening day and played great. You know, Calvin as well. We scored some runs. The next night we won, and then the next two days we we didn't we didn't swing well. Went to Tampa, faced Snell. He was good, and then we you know, then Morton. You want me to go through the whole? Thing? Every game. You do whatever you want. <laughs> you know, I've never argued with you. I know, but what I'm, I, I'm saying, what, what happens is, is that collectively you can, you can go into a little bit of a funk. And it can happen at any time during the season. But early in the year when it happened, it's magnified. And I think guys, I think guys pressed. And it was self-admitted. We talked about it, you know, during that process. And, I, you know, I think I probably shared it at some point during the first 15, 20, 25 games, but I thought guys were pressing a little bit, trying to get up to a good start. And Nolan was right up there. Uh, a number of guys were pressing. Charlie, uh, and then we lost Murph, and then we lost Dahl, we lost the other, we lost some of our guys. We had to make some adjustments, and we just got up to a tough start. So uh, again, uh, through any any downturn or any uptick. You got to minimize the downturn best you can, and a lot of times you do that by maybe a shutout, a great starting pitching performance, or a big breakout game. And when you're a little bit of uptick, man, you got to you got to ride that thing for as long as possible. You know, pitch well, you know, continue the offensive onslaught, and hopefully that amounts to a lot of wins. So you know, it's a combination of so many things. But early in the year, it, it, there is a little something about trying to get off to a good start. 
when it doesn't happen, there is a natural tendency to, to press. So there's so much more. I mean, nobody remembers last June, right? I think you won eight games last year. Yeah. But they can remember. I mean, I do. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a big issue all the time. Yeah, no. But that's just it. That's why, you know, we all talk about the present, right, today. But you get really got to look at the big picture question. And then really, to really get full, uh, full perspective, when the season's over, we can talk about the season. It's a pretty good idea. Yeah, we have a pretty good idea of what happened. Okay. We never end up talking about the season. Though. I know. You know Why I mean? not? <laughs> I don't even know because we're gone. <laughs> no, because we talk about it next February. That's what we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because you guys are out. You checked out. You're done. <laughs> What's the buddy Larry? He snowed in. September. I'm listening, Patrick. What is the buddy black scammer for from what you saw in spring, obviously last night was his first big league game. Can you give us an idea of what you see in his upside and things? That if I was writing a book, it's yeah. kind of for it. Uh, powerfully built, right-handed relief pitcher, high three quarter. You mean to go through the whole thing? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> in language terms. Big, powerfully built, right-handed relief pitcher, 6'4", 255. Will you no, I, uh, let's go back to our scouting day, right? Scotty? Uh, Were you no, part that, of the group that hey, made him a reliever? Uh, no. Well, maybe. He was starting last yeah, year, right? He started in double A yeah. when he was with the Whalers. <laughs> I always say Hartford Whalers. Hartford Whalers. Whalers. <laughs> it's it's a great name. It's a great name. Same like, yeah, right. colors. <laughs> Powerful, you know, powerful arm. Fastball with some movement. Good hard slider. Does have a curveball. Uh, there's a change up in there based from his starting days. But I think that, you know, his best stuff, when we talk about best stuff, is, you know, hard fastball, uh, hard slider. That we saw that last time. I mean, there's a curveball in there, like I said, from his days as a starter. And in, in watching the game, you know, on video last night on that. I, mean, I saw some movement now to the, to the fastball, which is great. So the upside of the stuff is there, right? I mean, it's major quality stuff. And at times on the scouting scale, plus, plus velocity, and it shows a plus slider. Now, again, the trick, consistent, consistency in, in stuff, right? Let's, let's repeat the velocity. Let's get the slider in a good spot. Let's not overthrow the slider and have it back up. Punch out to Drury was a backup slider on the slider back up. But repeats his delivery. He's got to, you know, he's, he's got to have that ability to control the running game, right? To certain players, if you get the late kick in the line. But again, like you can put the step as Diaz, Almonte, to Melgo. You know, this group of big, powerful right arms. Uh, you know, it's going to come down to, you know, making pitches. Uh, right? You know, over the, over, the, over the course of their individual outing and long term. So, but, you know, there's a, there's a big arm there. Right? And, you know, AAA, there was the internal numbers were okay. Right? So, but he's, you know, he's mature. He's developing the pitch. But it's, it's exciting to, to see that type of stuff. I think, you know what I buy it, there's coming off the mound and after the game. Uh, yeah, there's some boys there, but it's hard to be with him, but he's pretty good. On the other side, what are you seeing from Marcus Stroman so far? I mean, obviously you guys have watched him a little bit. Yeah, what are you, what you, know, are you seeing? Well, a lot of video. You know, I, don't, I don't think I've seen him pitch a lot. But, hey, you know, what, uh, the thing that stands out for me is the athleticism. Natural athlete, and you'll see it today, man. It's just the way he moves on the mound, the way he, uh, you know, he delivers the ball. You know, you see him maybe go field a bunt, cover first base, catch the ball. You know, his, his actions are very fluid, great body control, good arm. You know, 
can manipulate the baseball. We can sink it, we can cut it, we can throw a slider, uh, we can change up in there. This guy's good. He's got a good arm. He's a good pitcher. I mean, he's a, he's a good I mean, he's a good baseball player. He's just not a pitcher. He's, he's an athlete. But you've had to rotate guys in and out of the lineup so far this year with success. Um, how has that helped? Is it keeping guys healthy as well as sharp? Well, I, you know, again, we're going to we're going to continue to do that moving forward. I think, uh, you know, like like any coaching staff, you know, we're going to continue to uh, you know get guys playing time. We're going to use our we're going to use our bench. We're going to give guys days off. Uh, you know, all those things that you do to you know, create. Lineups and, and create playing time. And I think, uh, you know, we've seen, I think, the, the benefits of, uh, of that with some certain players. I mean, we're, Trevor Nolan or we're going to Charlie's going to play when he gets back, maybe, maybe not as, uh, you know, maybe not at the rate that he's played, maybe in the, you know, the last four or five years. He might get a few more days. We'll see. You know, but I think it's important that. Uh, Everybody contributes, here and we'll continue to do that uh, on a regular basis through you know a lot of different things that we discuss. And we ask ourselves why. Why should Rogers play? Why should McMahon play? Why should Trevor Abdel? Why should Charlie take uh, you know Friday? Why should Desi not play tonight? Or why should Desi play? All these things we talk about. If you can imagine, what you, you right now you have. Two second baseman who are hitting pretty well on a daily basis. What goes into the decision? Well, I mean, you know, Mac plays first, second, and third. Rogers plays second, third, and short. When the same comes things down, you're talking when about. You you just down, hey, you know, matchups, matchups, keeping guys fresh, giving guys a mental break, mental break, hey, day off. Uh, I think I mentioned that before about you know, some younger guys. It's, it's you know, it's good for them to, you know, watch, watch a game. Come off the bench in a national league game to play, like Rogers did yesterday. Instead of playing nine innings, he played two. Got him that bad, got a base hit. For me, that counts as playing. Yeah, yeah. You don't have starting him to play. Have you ever heard of John Havlicek? Yeah. I know. <laughs> Passed away. <laughs> but never, didn't start a lot. Of, I mean, started a lot of games, but was sort of a no, no for a great six man when he first started. Yes. Jack Mara? <laughs> You're starting guy. I tend to get more. So that's why I asked. Yes. And when you, when, you know, are there enough And I think that these guys are going to have a long career. They're going to get a lot of that. In their career. Has it been one of them now? Has it been Has it been Has it been the third inning? I think it's, 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 a great, it's a great opportunity for us. Does it feel like it's a great problem? It's not a problem. I, 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 would say, I was going to say, does it feel like a great, a great problem to have challenge. so many good players? It's a great challenge. It's not a problem when you have good players. <laughs>